What's up YouTube, I'm Mike, and today I am actually all week out of town with my family on vacation. So I'm gonna to try to use my cell phone to shoot a little content, just to keep the content flowing. And there's actually a topic that I've been wanting to talk about in light of this Shelby Starnes coaching situation with some athletes that have passed away. One of the things that you, one of the questions I see a lot in, in DMs and you, you see everywhere in social media, people are always asking like, you know, when is the right time to start using steroids? When is the right time to start using gear? And you get a lot of canned responses from athletes in the industry, you know, who will say when your diet is on point, when your training is on point, when you're X age. And I really feel like, like those are just bullshit generic answers that are obvious for one, but they don't really get to the deeper problem. And I think it's the deeper problem that's getting people killed. So I'm gonna give you a list of just check boxes. Basically, this is my opinion. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a trainer, I'm not anybody, I'm just a fucking guy. But in my opinion, these are some, you know, if you can check all of these boxes, independent of those other factors, then you are probably ready to start using anabolics. So, uh, the first box is the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis, axis if you're a male, or the ovarian axis if you're a female. You need to understand what this is because it is going to have long-term effects on your body when you get shut down from the use of anabolics and your potentially your body never recovers. That's the second thing that you need to understand is that if you're going to use anabolic steroids, you need to be prepared for your body to be changed forever. Uh, that means that you could shut down your own natural production and you could have be forced to use hormone replacement therapy for the rest of your life. Uh, when you use anabolic steroids, you will never be natural again, ever. So if you care about that, if you're gonna be in a, in a obviously a tested sport, or if you just have the integrity enough to not try to compete in a, a tested sport when you are not natural, the second you use any type of steroid compound, even if it's one single cycle, your body is going to build new satellite cells, it's going to change in an unnatural way, and you will never be technically natural again. There are a number of effects that, that occur in the body that come from steroid use that are effectively permanent, and one of those things is that once you know what it's like to cycle, once you see the gains you can make on cycle, the stamina, the endurance, just the gain, everything about it, it is very difficult to go back very rarely do people do a steroid cycle like once you get into this it is a slippery slope and it's probably going to have long-term psychological effects in the sense that you are always going to want to do them because the gains come so much more naturally not naturally they're <laughs> at a much increased pace which is the whole point uh, so second or third I forget where we're at on the list is aromatase you need to understand what aromatase is. You need to understand what hormones interact with aromatase because this controls, if you're a male, this controls your estrogen levels. I've made multiple videos on the challenges of managing estrogen and it is extremely important because there are a number of effects that occur from having too low or too high of an estrogen level, something that I struggle with myself. It is very difficult to dial in if you are not constantly checking your blood work. But one of the things that you can understand first is which compounds are going to lead to, that are going to interact with aromatase and cause your estrogen levels to fluctuate. The second thing, or the next on the list, is 5-alpha reductase. You need to know what is 5-alpha reductase. How does it work? What compounds will 5-alpha reduce into other compounds? For example, nandrolone 5-alpha reduces into a much weaker compound that has a number of potential effects. Uh, boldenone, most, not most, several of the, of the anabolics will interact with 5-alpha reductase and you will get a different hormone in your body when that occurs with different effects. So you need to know what compounds will reduce, what do they reduce to, and then understand those compounds. Um, what else can I think of? Um, you need to understand 17 alpha alkylation or methylation. Uh, one of the things that is so shocking and, and really probably one of the most, most dangerous factors to using anabolics is when you are using oral anabolics that are 17 alpha alkylated. 
That means that the hormone has been modified to require multiple passes through the liver. With each pass, the hormone will, uh, the body will cleave off one of these, um, these atoms and then it will release more of the, of the hormone. These multiple passes through the liver will cause uh, your liver enzymes to increase, which is a sign of liver infl inflammation, and if abused to an extreme, can lead to permanent liver damage. So, like, I met a guy in the gym the other night whose coach has him on so many fucking liver toxic hormones at insane doses, I could not even believe it. And so this is kind of the point of this video. Um, I mentioned earlier Shelby Starnes. In my opinion, if you are an athlete who is taking steroids, you are 100% personally responsible for what happens to your body because you should know what you are putting in it before you put in it. Saying my coach told me to take this is a fucking pathetic excuse. You should never trust another human being when it comes to your own health. I don't trust my own medical doctor. If he prescribes me a new prescription, the first thing I do when I leave his office is research that script to find out exactly what it's going to do, what the known side effects are, read reviews, because I want to know what this man is prescribing. I don't give a shit how long you went to school. I've had doctors on more than one occasion prescribe me meds that made absolutely no medical sense with, with a host of horrific side effects that if, if, if they were connected to a steroid, no one would ever do. So it's unreal the level of trust that people put into other human beings. So many people out there talk about their coaches like they're gods. One of the reasons you think your coach is a god is because you are uneducated. In my opinion, there are countless athletes out there who have no business being on steroids because they know nothing about what they're putting into their own bodies. And that makes you, in my estimation, not mature enough to handle this. And that's why I said earlier, it doesn't matter how old you are. If you're six years old, you can understand 5-alpha reductase and HPTA and aromatase expression and 17-alpha alkylation, good. Go fucking crazy. Obviously, you can't, and so that keeps you from getting into anabolic steroids. If you are a teenager and you are very intelligent and you understand all of these things medically and scientifically, then the second box or the, the, you know, the next box on the list would be how much experience do you have post-puberty? When you are 16, 17, 18 years old, you are still learning to cope with your body's natural androgens and all of the effects on your, your sex drive, your anger, your aggression, how you cope with, with trouble in life, how you cope with consequences, how you deal with authority, how you interact with your mom, your girlfriend. If you're 18 years old, you still have not gotten a grip on your body's natural production and what uh, psychological effects it has. You throw Trent in the mix and you're going to fucking prison. Like, it is a recipe for disaster. Entirely too many young men are using very potent anabolics. And in my opinion, it's not about the anabolic. It's not about what, you know, oh, you can't handle the trend. Sure, you can handle it. Your body can handle it. But can your brain handle it? Can your mind handle the intense aggression that's going to come flooding into you and some guy at the gym says something you don't like and next thing you know, you catch a charge? These are the reasons that you need to wait on doing hormones. So if you have not had the time to manage your own puberty gains, then you're not ready to do steroids. Last and on the list probably, I'm sure I'll come up with more, is you need to understand the difference between anabolic and androgenic. Most all of the negative side effects from steroids come from using androgenic compounds. Trenbolone is incredibly androgenic. Anavar is not, and this is why Females can take certain drugs because they are highly anabolic and very low on the androgenic scale. If you are a female, this is incredibly important to you, far more important to you than a man. So many women out there I see taking whatever their coach recommends. They don't have fucking clue one about what it is. They're taking all kinds of doses of Winstraw, which is not female safe. Uh, Primabolin is not necessarily safe for women, depending on the, the, the um, length of exposure and the dose. There are very few compounds that ladies can use for any length of time that will not change your voice, cause hair growth, cause clitoral enlargement, cause any number of permanent effects. And so you need to know exactly what these compounds are, especially you ladies, before you take them because your coach may not give a fuck about you. His entire interest may be in hanging medals around your neck to further his business, and when your voice changes or you grow a dick, he's not gonna give a shit. So these are very important things for you ladies to know. 
I can't speak to diuretics because I've never used them. I hope I never am in a situation where I can use them. Those diuretics are probably the most dangerous things you can use. Uh, like Derek from More Plates, More Dates said, you can, you can abuse steroids for an extended period of time before you're really looking at any permanent or catastrophic damage. You can misuse diuretics maybe once and drop fucking dead. So I would counsel anyone uh, or advise anyone, if you don't understand all of the other things in this list extremely well, stay the fuck away from uh, from diuretics. So anyway, um, I got to get back up here with my family. I just want to make a little bit of video. Um, what I'm probably going to do is shoot a series of videos breaking down each one of the items on the list in detail so that if you don't know what those things are, you can learn so that you can make conscientious decisions with your health. So um, please, if you do not, if you cannot check every box on this list, obviously I'm not your doctor, I'm not your trainer, I'm not your coach, you, would, you do whatever you want with your body. But in my opinion, if you do not have a working knowledge of all of these things, you're not ready to use anabolics of any kind. That's my opinion. I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of fucking kickback for it because really I think very few people in the bodybuilding community or the bodybuilding industry have any clue about any of these things. Uh, so anyway, that's my opinion. Hopefully you got something out of it. Hopefully it was educational. Stay tuned to the other videos in this, uh, for the other videos in this series, and we'll see you on the next one.